Welcome back. Let's talk about the Taconic Orogeny. This is the first of a series of mobile belt events, orogenic events, mountain building events, if you will. And this one is what helped to shape the, uh, begin to shape the Appalachian Mountains as we know them today. Um, so the current Appalachian Mountains, if we were to think of it, is now off the, the East Coast. But these are actually very old mountains. Um, these are kind of the United States um, uh, original mountains, much older than the Rocky Mountains. So let's talk about how the Appalachian Mountains came to be. Um, so first off, when we're talking about a, a mobile belt, the terms are kind of synonymous. So uh, an orogenic belt, origin, mobile belt, all those terms is a zone of Earth's crust affected by an orogeny. It's where we're making mountains, essentially. So a mobile belt uh, is the term you'll hear me kind of use probably the most, at least in this uh, section or in this unit. Um, a mobile belt develops when a continental plate crumples and is uplifted uh, to form one or more mountain ranges, usually at its margins. So this is where typically at uh, convergent boundaries, when things are crashing into a continent, the edges kind of get kind of crumpled up to create these mobile belts. So the uh, first uh, uh, Phanerozoic fan orogeny surrounded the, the Appalachian uh, mobile belt region. Um, the, throughout the... Uh, Sock time throughout the sock sequence prior to the the formation of the this mobile belt or the beginnings of this mobile belt, um, there was a lot of sediment being deposited along this passive margin, um, and then once plate tectonics took hold and things changed a little bit, is where we started to get the the creation of this mountain chain, this mobile belt. But again, prior to that, we just had a lot of sediment being deposited, therefore a lot of sediment turning into sedimentary rocks. And then once there was, again, a change in, in boundary types kind of just off of uh, the, the, what is now the east coast of the United States is when the Appalachian Mobile Belt was born. So uh, what was happening? So here's Laurentia, North America. Um, so we get a lot of sediment being deposited in the continental shelf area, sandstone, shales, limestones. That's what carbonate rocks are, limestones. And then, so this was a passive margin because it was not near a plate boundary. There was a divergent boundary that was actually pushing Laurentia, North America, away from Baltica, which is now part of Europe. So there was a divergent boundary. So the edge of the continent was not on the boundary. It was away from the boundary. So it's a passive margin. And so the Iapetus Ocean was forming in this, as these things are being pushed away, as the continents are separating from one another, the ocean kind of fills in that, that gap. So we can start to see that uh, here. So along, uh, so here's uh, uh, Laurentia. And what we'll see is right along this light blue line, that's this divergent boundary that's pushing the other land masses away. You can see it, these kind of, all of this stuff disappeared. All right. So the Iapetus Ocean is, is forming. But uh, once the uh, plate tectonics and motion and the boundaries changed, this is when we start to get into the, the orogenic event, the mobile belt building event. So that leads us to the Taconic Orogeny. So again, it's the first of several orogenic events, mo mobile belt uh, events to affect the Appalachian region. Once the passive margin along Laurentia and the, and the uh, oceanic crust just off of it kind of changed and it went from a divergent boundary to a convergent boundary uh, that was right on the edge of Laurentia, then that's what kind of facilitated the creation of this mobile belt. So then once the divergent boundary turned to a, a convergent boundary and the Iapetus Ocean kind of narrowed and closed as things were kind of crashing back in, um, that's when the these mountains began to form. Well, was, again, just the first in a series of events to push up the Appalachian Mountains. Um, the the Caledonian orogeny was essentially a mirror image of the orogeny, and that's what was happening over 
uh, to the, the plates or the crust that was crashing into Laurentia at the time. So that divergent boundary switched to a convergent boundary. And so we get the beginnings of the Taconic Highlands, this island arc that was forming that eventually got pushed uh, up onto uh, North America. So let's see how that occurs. So again, um, let's see, where are we at here? Okay, so now we're at the beginning of the Taconic Orogeny. You can see now that the land masses are back in the picture, meaning this divergent boundary is no longer a divergent boundary. In fact, you can't even see it anymore. So now we have convergence. So now we got this plate crashing into this plate and we start to get those taconic highlands being created and then as we can and so this is the very beginning of the taconic orogeny and by the end of it what you'll see is um, this material kind of further crashing and pushing into north america at this time so this is the the first orogenic event in the uh, building the appalachian mountains this first kind of mobile belt building event so now we have the sock sequence, the Tippecanoe sequence. We have the beginnings of the Appalachians being uh, created on the what is now the East Coast, which I guess at the time of Laurentia was actually the South Coast, but go figure. So let's go ahead and pause here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the Cascassia and Absaroka sequences, and then we'll go back into some of these mountain building sequence or mountain building uh, mobile belt events, orogenic events. So let's pause here and when we come back we'll talk about the Cascassia. See you back here in just a second. <laughs> 